Hello everyone, Kevin here, and I'm excited to share with you a really fun piece I just created. As it was coming up on a year since I started learning Blender, I thought to revisit an earlier piece to tie back to how this year went, and that was this Nintendo Switch. I remember creating this in the first 45 days of learning the program, and at the time I was trying to see if I could model something by myself, unguided, with everything that I learned. And I was really happy with how it turned out, although many details were missing like the trigger buttons. So to round off the year, I was planning to finish it, incorporating all the missing details, and make something more photorealistic. But after thinking about it, I felt like that direction didn't accurately reflect everything I had done this year. When I started learning Blender, I quickly realized there were so many things you could do in it, and I was more drawn to that 2D and 3D illustration aesthetic. So I decided to go in that direction for this end of the year piece. For the concept, I thought to keep it relatively simple, and I didn't want to change too much from the original piece. But I did want to add more energy and excitement instead of something static. I was thinking bright, vibrant colors, outlines, and glows for this. In the beginning, I wasn't comfortable injecting my own style right away because I was still learning, and that comfort slowly built over time as I got used to the tools and functions. Starting off with the mesh, I was planning on modeling the trigger buttons, but to save time, I opted not to. With the mesh done, I moved on to creating a new shader for the switch. It was a simple tune shader setup, except I had a wave texture node on it to make the coverage more interesting. I did that for all the elements on the switch, including the buttons as well. I wanted to add some depth to the switch, almost like a solid drop shadow. So I duplicated the switch mesh, shifted it down a bit, and then applied another shader with darker colors. I parented the second mesh to the first, and then animated the entire setup so it moved up and down slightly. With the main object completed, I moved on to creating the grease pencil elements. For this, I just thought of kinetic movement and stuck with very abstract and organic lines. This was a way for me to incorporate other colors and really just let loose with it. So I have this large blue line that cuts through the entire piece, these diagonal motion lines, and lots of different shapes here just to give the piece some texture. I thought of this piece more as a graphic illustration, but wanted to take advantage of the depth, so I varied where I drew those elements in 3D space. After, I added some multicolored flex to add some detail to the switch. And for the most part, I didn't really animate these elements because I wanted to focus on these swirling speed lines here. For those stylized effects and the background, I referenced a tutorial from Pierre Pico, which was really amazing and helpful. I'll leave a link to their channel below. Basically, these lines are actually curves and it's a shader that gives the illusion of a speed line. Within the shader, you can adjust the shape, the size, and the color. And to make it move, you can keyframe the start and the end of the curve. This is very similar to the moving elements in the background. It's actually one giant plane with a shader on it, except I made some adjustments to fit with the piece. Another thing I wanted to incorporate were pixel elements to tie back to the gaming theme. Using Grease Pencil, I drew light green and yellow strokes behind all these elements and applied a pixelate Grease Pencil effect to achieve the look. And when the camera moves, the pixelated elements flicker. Using the same effect, I thought of making some sort of overlay onto this piece using blending modes for this. The fun thing about Grease Pencil blending modes is that although the options are exclusive to the Grease Pencil object, the blending mode still applies to all the elements in the scene, despite them being other objects. So here I have a Grease Pencil object with with random strokes that I placed in the front. It has the pixelate effects on it and the blending mode set to subtract. When I change it to divide, it brightens up those areas in my scene. The last thing I worked on was the screen. In the original, I left it dark, but for this, I actually wanted to have something on it. But I couldn't think of what that was, so I ended up writing start and adding typography. For the actual screen, I converted the original mesh to a grease pencil object and drew this grid and these diamond elements with the canvas in the front orientation. I then applied the screen as a grease pencil mask so it looked like the elements were inside the switch. For the type, I used the type tool, converted it to a mesh, and then extruded it to give it some dimension. Then then I duplicated it and then converted that into a grease pencil object so that I could have the light blue outlines on it. The actual type is not masked by the screen, it just sits on it and is parented to the switch so it moves up and down with it. These elements have a noise modifier on it to give it some subtle animation and all the grease pencil elements have rim effect applied on them. For compositing, I kept it really simple but just applied some glare notes to intensify the grease pencil effects and bring out the color. And that's it for this end of the year piece. Thank you so much to all those who watched and joined the live stream. I really appreciate it. 
Also, thanks to all those who supported me in my learning journey so far. It really means a lot and I hope these videos are helpful for you. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Thanks so much and see you guys next time.